so much time churning over warm waters yeah. can do when they reach land. It's just amazing to me. And, and the water displacement, because of these big storms, is what causes the storm surge. Huh? And we have this really interesting feature on our map that tells us how high these waves are just off the coast. You want to take a guess how high these waves might be? Uh, 20 feet. Oh, very close, actually. Oh, really? Is uh, it really? Well, we're looking at 30 to 40 oh. foot oh, wave goodness. height. Oh, my goodness. That's much higher, really, than I was thinking. That's Isn't even incredible? hard to imagine. I know. And, and, you know, the storm surge is going to be about 15 to 20, uh, which is oh. still hard to imagine in and of itself. But waves this monstrous. I mean, that, that is how strong, how uh, huge this storm is. And we were talking earlier about how once this actually makes landfall, the cloud shield that we're going to receive is actually going to extend all the way up to, nor to almost northern Michigan. So, yeah, it's covering a lot of ground and a lot of uh, storm surge concerns, too, because all that water being pushed on shore. And so that's one of the reasons why, especially the Big Bend region, is uh, looking at perhaps the worst impacts here. You can see that this area is kind of highlighted to see 12-foot storm surge plus, but that plus kind of leaves out a lot of good information, which is the 15 to 20-foot storm surge, which is expected from about Crystal River all the way up to St. Mark's. And then going a little farther south toward Tampa, you know, between three and nine feet, uh, but, or six to nine feet, I should say. So still significant to the south, uh, but maybe not quite as strong, uh, or high, rather, as areas to the north. It's a Cat 3 right now, 125 mile per hour sustained wind speeds, become a Category 2 just south of Macon in Georgia. And just taking a look at these category, hurricane categories, the extreme wind speeds are one thing, of course, storm surge another, but Cat 3, 111 to about 129. So we're almost to that, the very highest point of a Category 3. Category 4, minimum wind speeds, sustained wind speeds, 130. And again, we're almost there. So it's possible that Hurricane Helene actually makes landfall as a Cat 4, uh, with catastrophic damage being kind of the, the wording here for a storm of that size and strength. Again, wind is just one component. Storm surge is another, uh, perhaps the deadliest. Uh, more actually die because of the flooding concerns more than just the wind itself. Now, the tropics, uh, as active as they are, uh, really are no match for land. And by the time it, it makes landfall, it's going to come to a fairly abrupt halt. It may not quite seem like it, but in the grand scheme of things, becoming a tropical depression, essentially just north of Atlanta, is pretty impressive. And still looking at lots of flooding rains and wind to the south. But locally, we're just looking at some clouds, some wind tomorrow for sure, but that's about it. Uh, 69 degrees in Fort Wayne now. I want to go back to this map actually because you can see Look at all the areas that have seen more sun today. You can tell which areas are under some uh, clear skies, which areas are under cloudy skies. Because we did get to 76 thanks to the sunshine earlier today, but temperatures have been dropping since thanks to the cloud cover. Temperatures will be down to the mid-60s overnight tonight. Not really a huge drop because of the cloudy conditions. And here's a look at future track. So cloudy tomorrow. If you are south of Fort Wayne, you could see a few sprinkles late tomorrow morning. But this system continues to move north and westward, bringing some of the heavier rain with it. So between 3 and 4, Jay County could see some moderate rain and then some strands of moderate to a heavy rain possible between about 7 and 10 p.m. across all of northeast Indiana, northwest Ohio. A brief break overnight into Saturday, early Saturday morning. Then by Saturday afternoon and evening, we're going to see another round of very light rain. This shouldn't be nearly as heavy as maybe some of the pockets of Friday evening, but still looking at some rainfall later Saturday afternoon, even if the morning looks pretty good Saturday. Uh, the rainfall forecast does show some tears here. So farther south you are, the more rain you're probably going to see, about half an inch uh, to maybe three quarters of an inch into southern Jake County. Go a little farther north, Fort Wayne, about a quarter to half an inch. Go a little farther to the north, uh, maybe a quarter of an inch or less. This could change. There could be some pockets that see much more than this, but that's just kind of an average of uh, what's been observed uh, with this particular system. Last thing I want to point out, strong wind gusts. Between about 10 a.m. and noon, we could see the wind gusts pick up between 25 and 30. Not sustained, just gusting. And then 35 to about 40, maybe some pockets of uh, 40 plus mile per hour wind gusts into Friday evening. So uh, this is still a strong storm, even so far removed from the actual uh, eye wall itself. We're going to be seeing some of that rain, wind, cloud cover. 75 tomorrow, 76, some scattered showers, lighter wind, both Saturday and Sunday. A little cooler on Sunday, 74, and then mostly cloudy, 76 on Monday, mid-70s on Tuesday, first day of October, mostly sunny skies Wednesday, 68. And then we're back to the mid, possibly upper 70s toward the end of next week. All right. Thank you for everything, Matt. As we